So today I want to show you generative fill in Photoshop beta. So as you can see I'm in the Photoshop beta top left. And how you get there is you go to your Adobe Creative Cloud app. It might look something like this in the beginning. Uh, what you need to do, you see the menus up on the top. You click on apps. It says all apps. You would click on, but even before you do that, I would click on updates. Check for updates. And that's exactly what it does. It checks for the updates, see the most latest is. And then on the left, there's all apps, updates. But then if you go to the bottom, there's beta apps. So if you click on beta apps, it'll list all the beta versions of uh, Creative Cloud apps. And so as you can see in the top one, Photoshop beta, it says open because I've already installed it. But if you go to this list, yours will say Photoshop beta with the word install button on the right. So you just click that, install it, and you're good to go. And so here I am in Photoshop beta. And I wanted to show you something a bit different. A lot of times people are just kind of changing the subject that they see in a photo. But I want to show you that you can also pretty much magically create an image from nothing right in Photoshop. So I already have a set of actions I've already created. So I'm just going to use this one to create a banner. I'm going to say uh, just Photoshop generative fill and just, you know, banner, whatever. And I have mine set to black, but you can set it to white. It doesn't really matter. So you're just creating a new document. You'll notice right with anything in the Photoshop beta at the bottom, there is a contextual, it's called the contextual taskbar. That is what you will need. If you don't see that, you will need that when you are going to do your generative fill. I don't really like it on the image, so I usually pull it just underneath. So in this case, I have just a new document set to like a horizontal for banner. I just do a command A to select all, and boom, up comes that contextual task panel or task bar, and it says generative fill. So the minute I click on that, it says describe what you would like to generate. So I was thinking it'd be nice to generate an Irish countryside. I just hit the word generate. You see the progress bar. As you can see on the right, I have my properties panel open. And you'll see why in a second. But this is pretty fast. It's like 15 seconds, 20 seconds at the most. It's pretty fast. It's coming in. <coughs> And boom, there it is. So move the uh, contextual taskbar down. So pretty great from the get-go. Now if I hit F, you'll be able to see it even better. No distractions in the background. And you'll see that with the properties panel open, there is my prompt, Irish Countryside. I can click Generate to generate a new sequence. But you already, already have these variations. So I have this version, this version, in this version, which I consider all of them pretty great. So most likely they referenced a uh, range of stock that's part of the Adobe stock to get these. So once I have this, like I said, I can click generate again and it'll create a new sequence that I can also choose from. Already halfway there, it's on its way. Still pretty fast. And then there's this new series, similar but different. So a little bit more grass, brighter green than the original. But even the first one I like. I mean, I think all of them are solid. So, so I go to this one. And then you'll notice here on the right is the generative fill layer, generative layer. That's the icon, the new icon for it. And it does have a built-in mask. So you could click on it and paint away and bring back if you needed to. So in this case, I want to kind of take it further. And um, over here, just make a simple marquee selection. Once you make a selection, the generative fill option comes up in that contextual taskbar. Just bring it down. I hit generative fill. It asks, what do I want to put it in? And I'll just say... Uh, bird 
I don't even know if you need to type in, say, flying bird. I think it just will read that already. Hit generate. It goes pretty fast. And then, as you can see, created two birds. Not bad. That's kind of dramatic. I like that one. Um, and then just to be aware, if I go over to the Layers panel again, if I do a Command-J to duplicate, it makes a copy just for this instance. If I move this, you'll see the square around it. See, so you see that it's moving pixels with it. See, so it takes the sky with the bird. So if you move it, it looks strange. So if I wanted it, say, over here, what you need to do is you move it and then you hit generate again and it should create a new bird in that new location on the left side yep and so you get a whole variety and it even read the uh, kind of gray clouds on the left Did it so I turned that off. There was already gray clouds on the left, and it even added that aspect to it. So I have that. I have that. And I like the one on the right more. Yeah, I don't want to move it up, though. I'll keep it there. And then for the sake of fun, I'll just maybe put a uh, section there. Generate a fill. Maybe say garden gnome. Hit return. Progress bar is pretty fast. So it's reading the lighting of this photo and the general perspective. Look at that. <laughs> so there is right in the front, front left. And then as you can see in the properties panel, it gives me other options. So I think I like the green one. I kind of like the fact that he's kind of cut off a little bit, it makes him more kind of pulling you into the image. And so, I can just save this as, you know, Photoshop generative fill banner and, uh, you know, use that to, for maybe the banner for this video. So I'll close that. Okay, so then this is what we tend to use most for the generative fill in Photoshop. So you bring in your own photos or, in this case, a stock photo. So it's a stock photo I got from Pexels.com. And... Uh, it's pretty much as simple as, you know, you, you see the contextual taskbar here. You could either click select subject, and then the minute you do that, it comes up with the generative fill option. So I click that, and I could say cat. Now the only thing is, I think it does take into accordance the size of your selection. So if this is a uh, you know, a somewhat normal size or larger woman, and she's vertically, you know, going up, it's going to, you know, maybe create a very big cat if I typed in cat. So we'll see. Might have to put a dog, so it'll be a standing dog that might look more appropriate in the thing. But the thing that's great about Jenner Phil is it reads the surrounding areas, and it should, yeah, it's not too bad. It created some weird dome. But, um, you know, you have variations in the properties panel. And then if I don't like that, I just go over to my layers panel. Just click on it once, hit the delete key, and it's gone. Now, in this case, um, I'm curious to see what happens if I make a more loose selection. So I'm going to make a loose selection around. It reads more of the background. Click generate fill and say dog this time because it might be standing. I think it might be more appropriate. Hit generate. Pretty fast. It's reading the image of her and the image of the, the background, the contents of the background. So that's weird. It looks like a dog is <laughs> jumping up but behind the wall. So it looks like he's falling. There he's standing on it. That's kind of cool. Yeah, so that's good. So I think that one's, for most part, successful. 
And like I said, it, it does do a great job at building the background. So the city is kind of seamless. You don't see any like white halos around the image. Um, for most part, you don't see any kind of funky pixelation or strange kind of geometrics of the buildings. So like this is before, that's after, pretty clear. And then once again, in the properties panel, you just click generate and it'll generate a new sequence of three. Pretty fast. There we go. So that's a new series of three. That's one, it's two, this big tongue. Maybe he's got two tongues hanging out, don't know. <laughs> That one looks like he's about to catch a Frisbee up there. And yeah, there's a little distortion on some of the feet, things like that. But for the most part, it's pretty pretty great. And it even rebuilds, you know, the kind of wall that it's standing on and rebuilds the background. Um, and do remember, this is Photoshop Beta. This is the first uh, iteration of the generative fill. So pretty great. So I'm just going to hit F to get out. And then go to this image where I'm going to do similar. And I think I prefer using the lasso tool to just do a loose selection because I do always want to pick up a little bit of the background because I think that might help it to replace those elements. So loose, connect it again. Click generate fill. It asks, what do I want to fill it with? Um, maybe just man. I don't know if I need to type man sitting or just man. So I'm just going to say man and then hit generate. So instead of woman, I could have a man sitting on the kind of little boardwalk there looking at this beautiful view. Pretty quick. And it should take into Accordance, the perspective. Oh, that's interesting. So he's standing. I didn't even type in standing mat. But that's the first one in the properties panel you'll see. If I click on the second one. Oh, he's going to kind of squatting man. And here's, he looks like he's about to jump into the water. The uh, foot in front is a little, little funky. But uh, so let's hit generate again and see what new series of three will come up with. Maybe I'll go back and type in seated man to make it uh, replace her in a more realistic way. But, you know, there's a little bit of distortion, but the boardwalk is pretty well done, and it lines up the lines very nicely, and it even has a little shadow underneath his feet. And, yes, it's the feet are distorted, but it's pretty well done. So, yeah, here he's kind of walking into the water. <laughs> here he is breakdancing. It looks like he's got three hands. It's about to jump in the water. So yeah, so I'm going to say man, or seated man, maybe. Seated man, hit generate. Very quick, really. 10 to only, only 10 to 15 seconds. Create a new composite. Don't have to make a selection to cut them out. Oh, that's very good. So that's kind of more of what I was looking for. So seated man sitting here looking out at this wonderful view. Here he brought his own square pillow. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. And I like the way that it you know it builds up the uh, the background information. So it does a pretty good pretty good job retouching rebuilding the houses behind pretty good and let's see and then I wanted to see how good it, it does with say a black and white image so same idea I could either click select subject or I prefer choosing the lasso tool making a, a slightly loose selection around the subject Generate a fill. Don't know if I need to type seated, but I'm going to type seated cat. So 
reads the surrounding areas, reads this place that she's sitting, should put it right on the top. Interesting, long tail. Here's where the tail got disconnected, which is interesting because the tail I find a little strange in the front, but this one, remember that you have the wonderful option of having it as its own layer <coughs> with a layer mask. So if I click on the layer mask, I'm now in the layer mask. I just choose my brush, switch the flow from 41 to say 99 or 100, make my brush a little bit larger by hitting the right bracket, make sure that black is my foreground color, and I just paint over it. It's created some kind of funkiness there. Oh, of course, it's bringing back, yeah, that's right. So it's bringing back her leg and feet. That's what that was. So yeah, you have to be aware of that, that you might have to go back and, you know. So for this instance, I like the cat, but I want to just kind of make this whole again. So I turn off this. I'm going to select just her legs. And then I hit generative fill. And then this time what you do when you want to replace uh, content from what's already there to like rebuild it. So you want it to read that. You don't have to type in like new stand or, you know, new concrete. You just type in generate after you make a selection and it will read it and it should clear her legs and just kind of extend some of the details of that beginning of the uh, staircase. Pretty fast, pretty fast. Um, no, this is very interesting though. Um, it didn't do what I wanted it to do as such, but I have to admit what it did is pretty amazing. So let me zoom in for that because that's quite cool. So what it did do is the original is a girl with the kind of sandals on, and then what it did is it extended her legs and with like her bare feet. It looks like there might be some extra toes, but uh, that's pretty amazing. So it's pretty amazing that it extended her feet and took the sandals off. And then here's another variation, a little strange, but uh, that's where she's a bit shorter feet, but I think it's five toes there. So interesting. Remember, this is the first version of Generative Fill in Photoshop Beta, but pretty great. Pretty fun, some really cool features, and soon I will show you a video about doing similar generative fill in Adobe Firefly. Thanks for joining me today.